Hi, bio team. At this point in your life, you know that oxygen is a pretty important molecule. Uh, but I just wanted to dive into what makes it so useful for living things. Uh, most of the use we get out of oxygen has to do with the fact that it is a super electronegative uh, atom. That is, it's able to attract electrons. And as a result, it's very reactive and able to break apart other molecules. Uh, so for example, CH4 or methane is a stable molecule by itself. Uh, but if it's exposed to oxygen and a little bit of energy, the oxygen is able to take the place of a couple of these hydrogens. And in the process, it attracts uh, carbon's electrons toward itself. So we call this process oxidation. And right now we say that carbon is partially oxidized because it's lost control of some of its electrons that it's sharing with oxygen. Now if this molecule were to be exposed to more oxygen, carbon could become completely oxidized. That is, it could lose control of all of its shared electrons. Now it's possible for this process to reverse. That is, uh, carbon can regain control of its electrons uh, in a process called reduction. And if we were to go all the way back to our original state, we'd say that carbon has been uh, completely reduced. A whole reason biologists care about oxidation is because it's how we break down our food to get energy. Uh, take for instance glucose, a simple sugar in the most basic form of food in our body. If we wanted to get energy from glucose, if we wanted to recharge some ATP with it, we would completely oxidize its carbon through the process of respiration uh, into carbon dioxide. And if an organism wants to turn CO2 back into glucose, that is, an organism like a plant wants to make sugar, it has to reduce the carbon through the process of photosynthesis. And so in our bodies, uh, the process of respiration or oxidation is exothermic. It releases energy. Uh, in the process of photosynthesis, the reduction of carbon from CO2 into sugar is uh, endothermic. That is, it uh, stores energy for later use. And furthermore, if our bodies wanted to take an excess amount of glucose and store even more energy for later, they could further reduce uh, the glucose with conversion enzymes uh, into a lipid. And so you can see that the carbon in lipid is almost completely reduced. That is, most of these carbons uh, have control over their electrons. They have not been oxidized. And that's it. At this point, you guys have some practice problems. Uh, we'll see you next class.